Okay, here's a, a supplement to the stuff I've already loaded to do with uh, iPad. It's actually a, a section from uh, the book Isis in India, or uh, as it, Isis, Goddess of Egypt and India, to give it its current title, uh, which it's really about the Indian side, but uh, half of the book is about uh, the, the cult of ISIS in Egypt itself, because you need to know something about that uh, in order to kind of work out what you're looking for in India. So it's kind of quite did two things, really. And at some stage in the book, I remember that uh, I kind of presented this little thought experiment, visualization, if you like, uh, which is one of the uh, things that I suggested that we explore. It's not exactly the um, the meditation that uh, I suggested for for this. I might sort of add that in a moment, but I I thought it was it was the first version of it. It's actually it was, most of this bit of the book occurs in the same monument in the iPad in the kind of womb-like monument and also another monument is a few miles away on the other side of the Nile at uh, Luxor uh, which is a, a, another little kind of mystery shrine uh, to the goddess Isis but but that has a lot of similarities it has an underground section where people were uh, initiated essentially into the into the mystery cult so that's what uh, it concerns. So I thought I'd just recall that for now uh, and perhaps come back and do another one with the uh, more specifically focused on this idea of entering the womb, although they're kind of connected. The idea is in uh, in occultism and in, in this magical tradition, one engages in a, a kind of thought experiment or a uh, a, a guided visualization or just yeah you call to mind a sort of story uh and these little stories are quite a lot of them in the uh egyptian tradition and and then you kind of i don't know you listen to it and then you kind of just meditate through it you repeat it but with you sometimes people find it useful to to play the recording and meditate along with it or or use it as some sort of preparation so we either one works this 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 one might just work that if we listen to it anyway it was called initiation visualized which i said was a uh an exercise in experimental archaeology and an imagine imaginative reconstruction of a candidate's journey which culminates in his initiation into the mystery cult. The setting is the already mentioned complex of small temples that exist in ancient Thebes in Upper Egypt. Uh, your first initiation might be into the cult of Isis. Uh, for some weeks before the initiation, you would have been living in special accommodation in the small Roman town that surrounds the Temple of Isis at Deir el Shalwit. You can exercise by walking in the nearby cultivated fields which run beside irrigated canals and lakes. West of the town, beyond the fields, begins the desert where people only venture to bury their dead in the mountain necropolis. The desert is the domain of dangerous animals, wild dogs and wolves, which howl in the night. Although there are well-trodden paths across the desert, your mentor advises you to beware of some of the creatures who have no inhibition against attacking a per person if they're alone or defenseless. And beyond the low desert, there are mountainous cliffs that rise up to form what's known as the Libyan Plateau. You cast your mind back over the period leading up to your initiation in this moment. As the fateful day approaches, the rhythm has changed. You now spend the best part of your time reading sacred books in your temple or space, 
sometimes discussing an obscure point if need be with a mentor, who was known then as the Hierogrammatos. He was a scribe in the service of the temple, a priest who interprets sacred texts for you and guides you through the process of initiation. Mostly you meditate in the quiet rooms set aside for this within the temple space proper. You make a point of only eating simple food, which in invariably means vegetarian. That's to say nothing too overstimulating for the senses. You should also cut down on any wine that you drink, preferring to drink pure water if you can get it, or if need be, you can prepare a calming cordial made by boiling the hibiscus herb and allowing it to cool to make a very delicious and sustaining drink. Everything is sure designed to calm the senses and to avoid nourishing negative thoughts. Someday these thoughts are like dem demons that sh should not be fed. That's one view. Your, your mentor has already recommended that you pay special attention to the Book of Gates, one of the underworld books. You know it almost by heart and find it comforting. You feel it will be your guide in the transition to the new life that awaits you. You mull over the events of what will soon be your old life. You think about the chain of causes that has led you to this moment and about the new life to come. It is a period of incubation, almost as if you were to give birth to a new you. It reminds you of how the philosopher Socrates spoke of himself as the midwife of knowledge. The Egyptian way of reckoning things say there are 10 days in every week. They also say that the 10 months of the period of time a mother incubates a baby in a womb, 10 months. In your meditation each day of the 10 corresponds to one of these 10 months. So as each day progressive, progresses, you become ever more mature and ready for rebirth. Other things your mentor told you that once seemed obscure and required much thought now seem to make more sense. He asked you to make a decision about the emblems to be present at your place of sleeping on the last night. He made you think about the design of the beds in the temple sleeping chambers. They all have four legs, but they are carved to resemble those of particular animals. Boards have been individually caved, carved with one of three. You surmise that it is one of these animals that will carry you over to the other side during your night journey. These animals are the fearsome hippo, the cow, and the sun suspended between its horns, and the leopard. All three are rich in symbolism. It dawns on you that your mentor is asking you to consider the nature of each of these beasts as it relates to your transformation. In what sense are you like a hippo? In what sense are you like a cow? In what sense are you like a leopard? The hippo does not eat meat, but is extremely fearsome, especially when protecting its territory or young. The cow is a symbol of Isis herself, powerful but also nurturing. The leopard is a carnivore whose form represents pure naked power. The fateful evening arrives, that of the new moon or the full moon. You bathe in the temple baptistry, a brick-lined sacred lake east of the temple. You change into a simple full-length robe of natural undyed cloth. Your mentor leads you to the special chamber in which is a comfortable couch in the form of your chosen animal. On it is a mattress of folded linen. There is a small table in which there are two small terracotta jugs, one filled with water 
the other containing a mysterious substance that your mentor tells you to drink promising it it will be a pleasant and help you through the night this done you settle down on the couch and your mentor reads the familiar lines that open the book of gates as the mentor reads you drift into the world of sleep and dreams you who came into being from ra from his glorious eye granted to you is a hidden seat in the desert come together all those created by the gods the god has taken your measure in the necropolis and it, as he does for all those living on this earth created as it is from his right eye the sun the desert is bright i give it light with what is in me souls of the west those who would destroy humanity my glorious eye is on you i have ordered the destruction of the destruction of the enemies of ra of the enemies of those upon the earth where the chosen ones are breath be given to you amongst whom i am let there be raised for you dweller in the region of offerings to you is restored the diadem in the desert to you is restored the diadem in the necropolis and the god shall say your presence is commanded by the great god he who lifts up his arms and moves his legs as shall you come to us you who dare his essence and say hail to the one in his disc great one with numerous forms the egyptians divided the period between sundown and sunrise into 12 equal parts called hours although you sleep through this whole time you are aroused at the beginning of each hour by the sound of a priest reading the appropriate section from the book of gates each of which 12 chapters corresponding to each of the hours and you were momentarily excited by these words before again lapsing into your meditation your dreams keep pace with the lines as you rest half heard and half remembered in those hours you dream of entities and your soul's journey from dusk to dawn in the silence it is as if you were watching a drama at the theater or observing the progress of a night pageant sometimes you are one of the actors in the drama at the first gate a large serpent stands his name guardian of the desert is upon the door he opens for ra and those upon the earth full with the chosen ones of the gods and your mind as if it is a god speaks from the prow of the sun boat saying to the wise serpent guardian of the desert and you hear the lines concerning the star goddess and you recall how you have been taught that she is also a form of the goddess Isis, your patron. And in the morning, how you will rise again and be reborn. On the sunboat of the morning, lifted by the abyss, abysmal waters surging up from the faraway world, and Kephra, the sacred scarab, as a new sun born through the eastern mountains, Isis and Nephthys bearing him up, to the waiting goddess of the sky who stands above this earthly sphere out of the old and into the new you are lifted into her arms mother of the gods knew it you wake refreshed and renewed details of your visions during the night journey are for you and you alone one ancient initiate commented on the whole experience with these words i approach the boundary of death and tread persephone's threshold i was carried through all the elements after which i returned and at midnight i saw the sun flashing with bright effulgence i approached close to the gods above and below and worship them face to face.